Well, our next guest is Arkansas's very own, the winningest coach at the University of Arkansas football, Coach Houston hey. Nutt. Give it up. Sounds good. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Uh, it's hard to believe it's 61 days away till we come right here. And, uh, I just hope, I just hope our team just plays it just as half as good as you sound and the way you sing. That is just beautiful. Great job. All of y'all sound great. Um, I feel very privileged to be here tonight. I'm here because of Jennings Osborne and his wife Mitzi. Uh, are they givers or what? Do they fix a plate of food or what? Yeah. Wow. I hope you have some take-home carry bags, and I hope you didn't eat it all at once. Um, I just want to visit with you just for a short while. I feel very uh, fortunate. And um, what I want to talk about just for a few minutes, number one, is I want to really give praise to mother and fathers. Um, I just, that's right. I, I, I'm just so thankful that I was um, in a home with a very loving mother and a father in a Christian home. And uh, I had this dream when I was nine years of age. I was going to be in the NFL, NBA, or both. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. And I knew that when I was nine years old. And everything was going right according to plan. Even when I was a senior in high school, I had over 250 collegiate scholarships offers. I had Bear Bryant in my living room. I had uh, Dick Vermeil, who was at UCLA. Uh, Ron Meyer was at SMU. Frank Broyles at Arkansas. On and on and on. And I'll never forget, though, how quick that time in college went by. And then all of a sudden, in 1980, the saddest day of my life was what I call athletic termination. Because my name, for the first time, was not called on draft day. And I've been playing it since nine years of age now, remember, to be in the NFL, NBA, or both. But here's the greatest news there is. You know the good Lord has a plan for you. For everybody in here, he has a plan for you. Now, it might not be what you think it is, like it had what, what I thought I had. I thought I was going to NFL, NBA, or both. But he wanted me to be with a 19 and 20 and 21-year-old young man, and I'll never forget the first day I got cut from camp. I came back to Stillwater, Oklahoma, and Jimmy Johnson was there in the parking lot. He said, hey, Houston, what are you going to do now? And I gave him a real good answer. I said, hey, Coach Johnson, I'm going to keep working out. I'm going to keep lifting and keep running and keep working. I'm going to keep a good work ethic because I know I'm supposed to be in the NFL, NBA, or both. And he said, okay, until that time happens, until that day comes, you're working for me. At $1.65 an hour, you're in the dorm with my freshman. And, as he, and I said, yes, sir. And he walked away. And I don't know if you all remember, he had cons. His hair was always perfect. He had consort hairspray, and as, he, as I walked away, I never would forget saying to myself, you know, Coach Johns, who do you think you are telling me to go live in your dorm for $1.65 an hour, taking care of your boys? But it was the greatest thing that ever happened to me. In the very first week, I had over 25 to 30 young men come into my room, in the dorm room, and I was 24 years of age, and I'll never forget a little 17-year-old coming to me, hey, Coach Nutt. And Coach Nutt, that was the first time somebody called me Coach Nutt. And it hit me. And he said, Coach Nutt, what, what's Coach Johnson going to do to me tomorrow? I said, sit down here and let me tell you about it. And I got the feeling, all of a sudden, very, very important. Because this young man was looking for me for guidance. And he needed me as a counselor because he is away from mama and daddy for the first time. And I never will forget sitting in that staff room after 30 days of this, right before school starts, Dave Wanstatt, Tony Wise, all my peers, all these coaches are sitting in there with Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson says, for the first time, we didn't have one freshman quit. For the first time, we didn't have one freshman have a DUI. For the first time, we didn't have one freshman skip an academic meeting, and that credit goes to Houston. And I punched Pat Jones. I said, what, what did he say? You need to wake up, silly. He's talking about you. And all of a sudden, that $1.65 an hour job got real, real important. And, you know, sometimes even the ones that, that love you, they pour cold water on you sometimes. You know, just sometimes. And you got to stay strong. I never get going to my fiance, Diana, and who's my wife now, and I couldn't wait to tell her. I said, Diana, you're not going to believe this. 
Jimmy Johnson, he bragged on me today. In front of the whole staff. And you gotta realize, see, my wife, see, she was a geologist and she's already out in the world. She even, I mean, she had checking account. You know, she was buying a refrigerator and, and I was just trying to make it, you know. And I said, hey, don't pour cold water on me right now, huh? Because I, I know this, the good Lord wants me to be a coach. What about the NFL, NBA, or both? That's out. We're going to the next level. And that's what I want to encourage you. We go out to recruit. We try to find difference makers. Somebody who's going to make a difference in a ball game. But do you know what? More than any touchdown that can be scored, more than any touchdown pass, more than any wins, you know what the most important thing there is? A personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And I tell you, there's nothing like making a difference in a young man's life. And I don't know if you realize it right now, in the year 2001, if we sign 25 young men, on the average, 17 will come from a one-parent home. And usually it's the mother. And I tell you, I have an awesome respect for the mothers because I don't know how you do it because you play both roles. And all of a sudden, I'm the first male authority figure in his life that says, hey, I want you at breakfast at 6.30 a.m., I want you in the weight room at 2.30. I want you at the practice field at 4.30. Then when you get through eating, I want you to come back and we're going to start all over again with study hall. And you've got to realize in the year 2001, they're just not waiting in line saying, Coach Nut, what can I do for you next? It's a different world, you know. But here's what it is. You be a difference maker. You be that shadow. It's so easy to be sitting there outside as a, a mailman or a plumber or electrician saying, you know, I'm just sitting here. I'm, I'm not really that making that much of a difference. But you know what? You just don't realize. You might just be working with somebody that's listened to the words you use. They're listening to the way you talk. And there might be that little 10-year-old that's watching Daddy and says, oh, that's how Daddy talks to Mama. Oh, that's how Daddy talks to his son. Oh, somebody's watching and I want to leave you with this. I want you to be a great shadow. So many athletes come to my office and they say, Coach Nutt, if I was just six foot four, if I was just six foot four and ran four four, I'd be an All American for you, Coach. I just want to take a two by four sometimes and hit him right upside the head. Hey, don't you get it? Don't you get it? There's only one like you. Don't you be anybody else. Don't you walk like somebody else. Don't you talk like you be you. You be you. Be yourself. You be a shadow. Somebody's watching you. I have an awesome respect for mothers and daddies. and Keep being that great example. And we're going to keep trying to be a great example to a 19 and 20 and 21 year old. Might not be in the NBA. Might not be in the NFL. But we're going to make a difference. We're going to try to make a difference in somebody's life. Thank you very much. And I appreciate you being here. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our coach, Coach Houston Nutt. Come on, let him know you're glad he's part of the Arkansas Day of Prayer.